Hello, welcome to the uh, Potter blog or the uh, Pissing on the Roses blog spot. If you want to know the origin of uh, that name, you'll have to go to the uh, very first uh, blog post on the blog. And today is uh, June 8th, 2011, and there's an inbound uh, coronal mass ejection, solar proton event that will result in the uh, northern lights being seen from north of St. Louis, pretty much. Latitudes north of St. Louis. And I'm bringing, you, bringing to you today a special threat alert that I don't believe you're going to hear about anywhere else, but hopefully it will spark some discussion so that the actual threat may be better understood. In short, what the threat is is that this coronal mass ejection, solar coronal mass ejection, is sending uh, high energy uh, protons into our atmosphere. These are uh, greater than uh, 100 uh, mega electron volts, uh, ranging up to 1,000 mega electron volts. And when these protons end up hitting the uh, high atomic weight fallout that's in the upper atmosphere as a result of Fukushima, these particles will slam into those high atomic weight uh, particles from Fukushima you know, like a cue ball into a rack of billiard balls. And what will result is what's known as a uh, nuclear spallation. And there are lots and lots of different types of uh, interactions that can go on in the upper atmosphere as a result of this. But uh, I'm just giving you one that's readily verifiable by the public. And that's the interaction of uh, high energy protons with cesium-133. And the risk here is, is that when these protons slam into the cesium-133, they're going to end up producing a whole host of uh, radioactive iodines and a few other uh, xenon gases that uh, have half-lives ranging from an hour all the way up into the thousands of years. You know, if I give the worst case scenario, and I'm not saying this is the most plausible scenario, but the, uh, the fact is, is no one knows. There are no experts out there. No one with seat of the pants knowledge like Arne Gunderson who can quantify the exact risk. All we really know is that the risk exists, and for it to be better quantified it will require uh, tools and time that I personally don't have to uh, do this analysis but uh, I can make people aware of the risk and hope that uh, someone, does, someone with the capabilities to do the analysis will step forward and give us a risk matrix that uh, shows the, uh, implica the implications and the risks. Now, the first thing I want to show you here, and this is from my latest post on the uh, Piss on the Roses blog spot. And it's a threat alert, solar, solar proton bombardment of high atomic weight fallout. <coughs> And particularly we hear what we're talking about is uh, cesium-133. Now, uh, here's a uh, fallout chart I pulled up for uh, xenon-133. Now, xenon is a radioactive gas that's been produced out of Fukushima, and it's flown up into the upper atmosphere. And here's a chart from, I think this is May 5th, May 7th. Uh, showing the relative concentrations in the upper atmosphere up to uh, 4,000 baric wells per uh, meter squared. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is that xenon-133 has a half-life of five days. Afterwards, half of it turns into uh, cesium-133. Now, if you go and look in the files of the U.S. Patent Office, you will see that there's uh, patented processes out there where people produce radioactive iodine from bombarding cesium-133 with high energy protons. Now, what makes this concerning is, you can see here from this map, and basically the entire uh, part of the North America here is covered in high altitudes with uh, xenon-133, and that'll decay into cesium-133, which is not radioactive, and which will stay in the upper atmosphere for a long time just waiting to interact with the high energy particle. 
And whereas Fukushima is a point source that is pumping out these particles long term into our upper atmosphere, this is an expansive source of material that's just waiting in the upper atmosphere that when it's hit by a massive enough coronal mass ejection will pretty much simultaneously convert into, uh, into radioactive iodine and some, other and some other xenon products. Now normally uh, radioactive, uh, I'm sorry, uh, protons flying out of the sun tend to go towards the uh, poles because of the magnetic influence of the uh, Earth's magnetic field. <clears throat> but when there's a, uh, a solar storm, there's a geomagnetic interaction that uh, interferes with our magnetosphere and opens up our, uh, let's call it our magnetic protection. And a result of, as a result of that, we can see the, uh, the northern lights from much lower latitudes. And those northern lights are actually an example of, uh, of uh, high energy particles interacting with uh, atoms in the atmosphere. Now these upcoming uh, northern lights that should be viewable from, from latitudes north of uh, 38 degrees, which is roughly north of St. Louis in the entire northern hemisphere, these uh, northern lights that are potentially viewable, they may actually be unusual in the sense that there's now high atomic weight particles floating in the upper atmosphere. So there, there may be some unusual visibility. It's hard to say because I don't know what the uh, visible emission spectra are of these spallations. Haven't taken the time to look that up. But uh, the important thing of note here is, is the risk from this, from this uh, event. And this is just one of many possible spallations and other events, photofissions. This is a veritable witch's brew of high atomic weight particles in the upper atmosphere interacting with solar particles. I mean, there's, no, there's nobody with expertise in this that can tell us what's going to happen. There have been some studies in the past showing how uh, fallout from uh, above ground nuclear bursts uh, cause some variation in carbon-14 in the upper atmosphere. But nobody's really studied it, as far as I know, on this level and quantified the impacts. But the short of it is, is the, the risk is the greatest on the sun side facing part of the planet and the risk is proportional to how low the uh, northern lights are visible. So that's the best indication I can give of uh, what the risk is. I, I can't describe its likelihood. The only thing we know for sure is, is that these spallation interactions will happen. And you know, if we think of the, if I give you the worst case possible result, and, and this is We've gone from the realm of science fiction previously to post Fukushima. You know, this is not in, not in an impossible description, but this is a you know, this is a Bond villain level of of effect. And it's you know, it, best way I could describe it is if I was going to write a book on how to destroy the thyroid of every living mammal in the northern hemisphere, I would have a I would have some sort of nuclear reaction that would pump cesium-133 into the upper atmosphere and I would try to coincide it with uh, when we were at solar maxima and we are entering a period of uh, solar maximum that hasn't been seen maybe in 100 to 200 years. This may be a 500 year event. Uh, the event that's approaching us tonight is supposedly a glancing blow. Uh, but we shall see. Yeah, the best things to do are is stay out of the rain. Uh, don't fly an aircraft because uh, jet engines can uh, suck up radioactive material and concentrate it. And then finally the best thing we can do is pray. And I'll leave it at that and if you want more detail visit our uh, website at uh, www.potrblog.com potterblog.com or do a search for uh, Pissing on the Roses, feral dogs out in the cold, marking our descent one rose bush at a time. Unfortunately, that rose bush now happens to be Fukushima. Thanks and good night.